<laughs> Welcome everybody to Ask a Puppy Trainer Show episode 159. I'm Bethany, this is Sparky. <laughs> feedback, feedback. Beth, Bethany, that's your laugh. Yeah, that's me. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Woo! <laughs> this is S'mores. I've got S'mores with us. Um, I think he was about half the size the last time you guys, she, the last time you guys saw her. So she's, She got a haircut and a blowout. She's she blow beautiful. Yes. Very poofy. Yes. <laughs> poofy is poofy. She looks like she needs a fan. <laughs> All right, guys. So if um, we already went over this on TikTok, Instagram, if you have a question, please put them in the comments below and include the age and breed of your puppy. Mm -hmm. Puppy show, puppy questions, please. All right. You want to start? Yes, I will. All right. We got one from a schnoodle. This is from Taryn. At what age do puppies stop chewing slash nipping? We've redirected our 15 week old schnoodle, but he still has his moments. Most nipping and chewing, maybe even chewing a little bit, most nipping doesn't really stop on its own. It can't just be redirected. In some way though, it does have to be addressed. You could have a toy, he's nipping at your hands. You could try to put a toy in front of the mouth, redirect them away from it, and kind of guide them away with the toy. But here's what it comes down to. If a dog keeps returning to your hands to nip you, there's a question I ask myself is, how much rest is my dog getting throughout the day? Are, is my puppy amped up and overstimulated, which is gonna cause about 20 times more nipping? Are they getting good rest time in the crate? Are they having any downtime? That's the first thing I wanna address because I don't wanna address the physicality of blocking a puppy who's nipping if I'm not giving the puppy everything it needs on the back end. Am I training my puppy? Am I giving too much affection to my puppy on the couch? Am I always messing with their face? Am I always scratching their body with fast pets? It's a really easy way to overstimulate your dog to the point where they're gonna become more nippy. And, and then if you start to add blocking and you do represent quite a bit of excitement and, and scratchings and things like that, uh, it, it's not going to work anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just create a lot of frustration and you'll probably create more nippiness without even realizing it. But if you're doing all your back and you're doing your training, you're doing your calm pets on the couch, like look at Bethany right now. This dog is cute, but it's totally calm. And this is not a totally calm dog. It's a very excitable puppy like every puppy is. But it's pretty relaxed on her lap. Look how she's petting the dog. It's a deep pressure massage into the ribs. The hand isn't moving fast. It's very slow and methodical. It's actually calming our puppy down just by how she pets the dog. And then we obviously do the back end training. We do a good amount of crating. We do place duration to give them like out, outside the crate rest time. So, so basically what Sparky's trying to say is, uh, Did I, I didn't get there quick enough. Is no, is <laughs> that nipping is usually a symptom of something else. Now, the symptom could be that your puppy doesn't have a valuable no. And at 15 weeks old, they can have a valuable no. But that no is very unfair if you're not also doing the mental work, the training, not through excitement and running around the house and woohoo, come sit down. No, it's like mental challenges, mental work to real and teaching new things to mentally drain the puppy as well as physical and making sure you don't represent excitement first. So all of those things have to be in line. My personal opinion when it comes with nipping and biting is that, yeah, sometimes dogs grow out of it, but we still see all those dogs for training. Why? Because if you can't stop nipping and biting as a puppy, if you can't stop your puppy from seeing you as a chew toy, then you are very likely going to have other issues through adolescence, through adulthood, even if some of the nipping and biting mostly goes away. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Try that out, and if it still doesn't work, give it a couple weeks. We can give you a couple different techniques to play around with. All right, so I want to go over something fun because I like to make fun of social media, even though we're on social media. I enjoy it. Okay, there is a question from a client talking about nail trimming, wondering if hi. Yes, this, I said hi. This thing. What are you doing? TikTok. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta interact with TikTok. Well, it would be great if you'd let the rest of the class know what you're doing. Saying hi. Okay, cool. Um, TikTok understands. Anyway, there, some of you guys may have seen these videos circulate on TikTok and Instagram oh. where these people put saran wrap around their head and then they put peanut butter on and they let the puppy lick the peanut butter off as they're doing the dog's nails. This is just another funny, ridiculous attempt at getting likes and views. I mean, just to be honest. Now, here's the thing. Might it work for some dogs? Of course. Would it work for my dogs? 
No, I don't have one dog that wouldn't get frustrated by the third time and start biting mm -hmm. at the plastic and at my head. I don't have one dog that will like by the third time and start doing that. We even see that with licking mats too. The first few times a dog like does a licking mat, they'll actually- And then they start shredding the licking yes. mat to get to it quicker. Yeah, because they're, they've are they done it a few times and they've licked it and you're like, oh, this is so great. And then they start pulling it apart faster and faster. That tends to be the, the regular. I'm not saying don't do it I'm not saying you're crazy if you did do it yes I am I'm totally saying that but if it worked we we don't really care but I'm just telling you that a lot of times it really doesn't work and it's really <laughs> no <laughs> it's just, I'm trying to she's trying to it. sugarcoat it I'm trying to be nice to guys you. when I see that video it's funny it's hilarious it's funny. I, I think it is absolutely hilarious does it work the yeah. first time probably does it work the second time maybe does it work the third time hopefully but there's a chance that it's probably going to stop at yeah. some point. If when I, it comes if, down to it, it's a shortcut. If there I are ways to help a dog, yes, and it's through shortcut. training. It's not through shortcuts. If, if I a long-term solution. If I wasn't a dog trainer, because literally they would exit me out of the community and I'd be the laughing stock. So if I wasn't a trainer and I just had like a fun dog page, like some of y'all out there, I would totally do this for likes. Because it looks funny. Because it looks it's hilarious. hilarious and ridiculous. <laughs> However, oh, with that being said, though, have we given any advice yet? <laughs> no, I uh, do. I need to. I thought it was just on the video. I have seen. I like here. Okay, this is what I'm trying to say. You you mess with my thought. As crazy and silly as we think it is, I can see how someone at home who is really struggling and who's desperate sees something like this. And they're like, why not? I've tried a lot of other stuff and it's not working. Why not try it? I do have that empathy for that particular person. Nobody else. All right. Uh, was there anything more to it? I mean, struggling with nail trimming. Let's have a little bit of Oh, you want to talk about nail trimming? Yeah. Was that condescending? <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not condescending. You're like, how about we give some advice for nail trimming? Well, go ahead, Sparky. Give this some advice. This is more sassy than condescending. Us, first of all, you know, this is what I would say is um, have a treat pouch. Mm -hmm. And can you just have the Dremel or I prefer Dremel um, or nail file or clippers, like whatever you're going to use. I like Dremel. And just make sure you can just turn the Dremel on or have the clippers right there. And you can pick up your puppy, touch their paws, touch each individual nail. Good food good food and then take the back of the Dremel and touch the tips of the toes. Touch, touch, good food. It's a gradual process though. You're doing, and then, first you're working on basic handling, just making sure your puppy can sit still in your arms yes. for food, for reward. Or on and the then, floor with a big like puppy. Like Bethany mentioned, can you hold the paws without touching a nail? Can you put your thumb under the paw to split the paw open a little bit without touching the nails? Can you touch individual nails like Bethany just did? It's a gradual process. It's like when people try to vacuum in their house around a dog who's scared of it, mm -hmm. it takes tons of work up to get that vacuum anywhere close to them. Same thing with grooming, same thing with paws, same thing with cutting hair around the face. It's a gradual process of building comfort and trust. And if you- Trust is the key yeah, word. Yeah, trust is the key word. If you really wanna build that trust, do not do this once a week. You, it, five years later, you might get a dog good at it. Do it five minutes, once or twice a day for a month. I can tell you right now, this woman, my wife sitting right next to the camera, she did that like you cannot believe. And now she has a point to where she used to pick up our dog's paw to do anything and she would actually put her mouth around my wife's hand. Eventually she got to the point where she could condition her to back away from the hand with a word and then was using food between each nail. And she only did one or two nails a night every day of the week until she got the pup used to it. Yeah. The pup. You mean the pup. The, the eight dog. Year old dog. <laughs> okay. Um, you have a uh, I got thing on TikTok. Okay. Do I? Look mm -hmm. at TikToks? Yep. Alrighty. When I take my 16 month lab out for a walk, he walks fine, then jumps me from behind and bites and grabs. 16 weeks. Okay, cool. That sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds like a puppy. <laughs> um, for a lab. That sounds like a lab. <laughs> I'm very curious. When you're on your walks, does your dog give you focus for food? Can you ask for a sit at a distance from other dogs and other people? What's your dog's personality on this walk? Because if you can't get very much focus from your dog on the walk, it's very likely you're not ready to walk in the environments that you're currently in. Mm -hmm. So how we introduce walking is we're going in our living room 
up and down our hallway, our backyard, the side pathway along our house, the front yard, even if you live in a building, you live in a parking garage, you're all on leash, yes. on leash. But you're doing basic commands. You're doing come good food, come sit good food, come let's go turn good food. You're running through all your sequences that you're gonna expect your dog to do outside. And if they're not amazingly almost perfect inside, you're probably not gonna get much from them outside. Yep. You probably gotta spend a little bit more time building a relationship in a calm, controlled environment before going to an uncontrolled environment and building them up there. I agree. Even if it's um, anxiety, fear, mm -hmm. like there's no distractions, they just don't wanna be outside, that's possible. Or even if it's just them treating you poorly, either way, you have to have a better relationship of leadership and training with your dog, a better association with your dog to work them through it. So either way, you're really working inside, backyard, front yard, driveway, front of house, and you're not really going for a walk. You're spending 15 minutes doing, let's go work, stop, sit, down, come, okay? All right, uh, Nate, Natalie says, 18 week old terrier puppy shows signs of resource guarding when given yummy treats growls when he thought I was going to take it away. How should I address? Well, it's a 19 week old terrier puppy. So for me, you need to build, you need to focus on, oh gosh. Okay. This is, this is resource guarding. I get this question a lot. Um, so I just want to go over that resource guarding is basically a toy, a food, like something like that. They are physically guarding. They could just be stiffening up. They could be eating faster or they could be growling, snapping at you. That's resource guarding. They could resource guard a bed, a toy, anything like that. What I would say is what program are you in? Like <laughs> truly, because terrier, wheat and terrier, uh, and the combination of that with the resource guarding, you need to be in some sort of program. Um, I would get one-on-one -on -one program, like balance, interaction. Balance, balance training. training. We do have a program in online school where we do answer questions one-on-one, -on -one, like every week with people. I would, but I would honestly get the one-on-one -on -one help with balance training. Um, you, you'd be surprised like how much of the resource guarding happens away from resource guarding. So 90% of it is what does this threshold look like? Can you go and open the front door and he stops and waits, you know, for permission to go through? Is he waiting at crate? Is he waiting for food bowl? Um, when you do your training, is he really excited and jumping around or is he kind of more focused and calmer? Like, does it calm him down? Like all of these things you really need to be looking at relationship, how much cuddling I can cuddle this dog quite a bit and it doesn't have any um, major fallout like resource guarding. But if, if she was a resource guarder, she would not be up here with us right now nope. because it really elevates her status as, um, as a dog. But she is a middle of the pack type of dog, You're, so it's not an issue. Your Wheaton Terrier is not a middle of the pack type of dog. I imagine there's a strong energy there and he would like mm -hmm. to be the front of the pack. Well, Wheatons tend to have that naturally T yeah, too. Yeah, Wheatons tend to have mm -hmm. that. I don't meet a lot of follower, maybe middle of the pack, but not a lot of follower Wheatons. I really don't. So um, because of those things, you know, about the breed and the energy that you're getting, there's quite a bit. As far as tackling it directly, I would teach a really strong out. I would do clicker training only for this exercise where it's like he's eating out of his bowl like just a few pieces and I would go click and uh, toss a piece of food out when he backed away, grabbed a piece of food. And I would do that 30 times a day with like a little kibble at a time, just over and over and over again. And then I would do it with a Nyla bone. He can have a Nyla bone. He's on leash for safety. And I go out and I toss the piece of food. He goes for it, you know, click. And I would really. Are you clicking when he goes for the food or when you throw the food, just to clarify? Well, see, that's the thing. This is why you need one on one help because there's a, a period of time where it's click food, click food, click mm -hmm. food, even when they're not going for so the you're, food. So you're gearing up your. You're basically you're, gearing, gearing you're, up your click. Yeah, you're gearing up your marker. And then eventually you're waiting till the dog, the puppy makes the decision, and then you're clicking for that. You make that tr transition pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, there's, there's a lot to this. So do you have anything? To, that's why I, I can't really go any more in depth than that because there's there's a lot of steps and layers to this. I gotta be honest, we'd have to see the dog. Yeah. When it comes to this kind of stuff, that's why she said get one on one because even a virtual program, someone kind of has to be in the room with you working on this with the dog. Yeah. 
I That'd agree. be the most effective. It's, t- it's tough, but we don't, I agree. We don't want to give you incorrect advice, so some of the advice we gave is a little bit more general, yeah. but find a trainer who can help you with that and yeah. you'll be in a great place. Yeah. In the meantime, don't give anything like a bone that he has for longer periods of time that he might guard. Any, any training should come from your hand, should be kibble-based, um, or treats should, should come like from your hand right away for training. No, like giving him a bone. Greenies don't really do anything anyway, so, right? I got a good one. Wait, what happened? Are you well, still I was like, if he's giving him greenies, they don't really do anything, no. right? They're, I mean, if you're giving bones of, for teeth made of crap. control, it's not going to really yeah, help Yeah, so don't give anything. I just want to make sure. He's like the new, my nutritionist go-to, so I just want to make sure what I said was correct. Because <laughs> we've had dogs that need, we need to be that for our dogs sometimes. Uh, I want to go over this one because this is a great one, I think. Okay. This is from Heidi. Hi, we have a 14-week-old cockapoo who came home on Sunday. We're trying to follow the puppy schedule and toilet training routine, but he's stubborn and we spent over an hour taking him out to try after crate time and bringing him back in. How long or how many times is too many to do this? Oh, great. We don't answer this question too often, but some people really do run into this. Yeah. Bethany's got a really great answer. I'm going to try to give you as much as my answer as I can. But I take a dog out. I let him go potty. They don't go potty. I put him back in the crate. I'm doing this two or three times, and it feels like I'm doing it a lot, excessively more, like excessively much, many times throughout the day or throughout the week. I'm going to start taking him out for the potty, bringing him back in, and I'm going to spend some time doing training with him. I'm going to walk them around. I'm going to do some command training. I'm going to let them have a little bit of water, and I'm going to watch them very closely because what I'm looking for is their sign that they have to go potty. Mm-hmm. Some dogs got to move a little bit. Yeah. That's why they say, like, for adults, they got to take a walk to go pee in the morning. That's the same thing for dogs. They got to be moving. They got to get the bowels moving. They got to get the bladder moving in order for them to have a movement down there. Yeah. Do you want to add to that? To me, it's clear you can up your time. So not to oversimplify it, but up your time. Up your time in the crate, up your time out of the crate. Even though it's such a young, small breed dog, they can hold it for longer. And then once they have an accident, you know you got to cut back a little bit. There might even be certain times of the day where she can hold it longer versus mm-hmm. shorter. Like if there's more stimulation morning in the morning. Morning versus nighttime. Yeah. Stimulation in the morning creates a more ne- a higher need to go potty. Yeah. Less stimulation at night. She's going to be sleeping for most of it anyways. No, that's a good point. That's usually my advice too. Uh, Gianna Flaming, cool. Gianna Flaming. Flaming says 13 week old. We have a dog named On Fire. Paris on fire. No, it's just on fire. Yeah, but the sibling is Paris, so it's but Paris on fire. But the dog is called on fire. So she, her last name is Flaming, so it made me think of on fire. Flaming on fire? It's cool. Okay. My 13 week old doodle is a land shark. Well, yeah, you got it. You got, <laughs> you got a, a doodle. 13 week old doodle. How do we correct it? Call baby shark. Seems like he just won't listen. Um, saying ow, no, and walking away. Well, yeah, walking away. Walking away out. rewards it because yeah. then he says, okay, it worked. I got them to turn away. So yeah. it's probably some kind of play for power, but in a very small way. It's just puppies kind of being puppies, but yeah. they're always testing boundaries, mm-hmm. always pushing the line, see what they can get away with. Oh, yeah. But they don't do it maliciously. They do it because they're puppies and it's just instinctive to them. They're uh, always going to try to get a step ahead of you. Let me ask you this. Do you have a leash on the dog? When the dog is out of the crate, what is the puppy doing? If I don't have a task for my puppy, 13 weeks old, 14 weeks old? 13. 13 week old puppy. If I don't have a constant task for this 13 week old puppy to do when they're out of the crate, 10 minutes of walk and play, 15 minutes of training, 25 minutes of play duration, or even just putting them in a playpen within five, 10 feet of you if they're not already scaling it. If they are, you can use a dog then with some kind of tether. You gotta give them stuff to do when they're out. And that leash is very helpful. So when you're walking and they're with you and they start diving for your feet, you can do a counter tension. I'm holding here, I'm walking, my puppy goes for my feet. No, pressure out, and or sorry, up and out and away from your body. And you're not lifting the body off the ground at all. All you're doing is lifting the head slightly above the shoulder, which is gonna kind of straighten them out a little bit. And they just can't go down, but you freeze your feet, you stop what you're doing, you don't move, and eventually when they're like, okay, I give up, good, give slack, pause. Take a slow, methodical step forward and see if your puppy will start following. They're gonna go right back for those feet. No, pressure up and out, hold, lesson, pause, and then start moving. Do you wanna add anything to that? Do you wanna throw in food at all with that? Yeah, I would just say that that's how to handle it in the moment. 
but you really don't want to get in the habit of doing that all the time. And so that's reactive. She's going to give you preventative. So, well, he kind of already went over, you know, what's your schedule look like? What mental stimulation is this dog getting? You know, my question is, is, is the dog overtired, overly stimulated, needs more downtime, crate time, whatever the case is, could be frustrated. Is it when you're petting the dog? If so, stop petting the dog. Your dog's making it really clear. They want to do things, explore, learn new things, or they're tired. One of those two things, don't pet. As soon as I go to pet a puppy and they start gnawing on me, no more petting. Now, I will choose a better time because I, I want my puppy to know how to be pet and not you know, do that. So I'll choose a better time of the day to pet when the puppy is calm and I'll stay away from the head and face to start with and I'll move very slowly, very like massage oriented rather than, oh, cute little puppy. Then I might work my way up to the head or ears. Um, okay. Let's see. I had one on here I wanted to answer. Oh, yes. Can we go over that one? Oh, fine. All right. And then I'm doing that one. Do we have time? <laughs> we do have time. My Nicole Meyer says, that name sounds familiar. Puppy is 15 weeks old, pooping in her crate at night. Her last meal is at 4 p.m. Oh, I like to do the early meals too. Mm -hmm. And I take her out at 11 p.m. before I go to bed. Perfect. I've made the crate smaller. She just lays in her poop. I have a follow-up though. You take her at 11 p.m. Is she pooping at 11 p.m. when no, you take her out? I don't think so. Because if she's not, you're not going to bed yet, sadly. You're yeah. probably going to have to do some double-up training. So like, Sounds like exercise. That yeah. They need exercise. 11 p.m. Give your potty opportunity. Bring her back in if she hasn't potty, didn't go poop for you, and you're gonna do a 15 minute training session, about mm -hmm. five, 10 minutes of downtime on place, another 15 minute training session, maybe a short walk around your living room, up and down your hallway, maybe even, maybe even up and down the sidewalk the a few times, the just so the smells can start hitting your puppy. Yeah. And then when they're like starting to sniff around the more, I'm like, to the grass, yeah. go potty, and then I wait them out. I'm calm, body language is calm and then you might even get a poop from them after that, but you probably get to add a bit more exercise and some kind of mental stimulation to get that brain moving and the bowels moving too. It may not work as easily as that. I always think about my small dog, Happy, when she was that young, she was very hard to potty train and I wasn't home all day long like a lot of people are now and so it took made potty training <laughs> take like seven months. <laughs> and so this was an issue with her and she was very unusual at night. Like earlier in the day, I could figure things out, but at night she'd get like that zoomy bewitching hour. She also and got them kicked out of that same apartment. Yes, yeah, she got me kicked out of an apartment. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, she <laughs> and she would um, she would just you know go crazy, and then you know we would just lay around because I didn't know any better, and I wouldn't do training at night. I might do some play, and then she I'd only spend two minutes outside, you know, just like a quick pee crate. You know, we all go to bed, and then I learned that wouldn't work. She would you know pee and poop in her crate even if I got up every three four hours. Like it just that's what she would do. I had to really play around with what he said, and what ended up working only at night was like. She got to run around and play. Then I did some focused training. Then she'd go to crate for an hour because she was so, so happy, overstimulated and nervous and fearful. Like just, she was all the things. And a lot of little dogs are like that. It would take 30 minutes to an hour for her system to calm down and for her to actually be like, oh, I have to potty because then I would take her outside and she'd get overstimulated again. So I might have to go outside and then do a little walk with her do crate again for 30 minutes. And this is all from like 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. roughly. Crate again for 30 minutes and then I'd take her out 11 p.m. and she'd finally poop. So I had to have this very specific rotation for her. And so that's something to um, keep in mind. Exercise, the combination of exercise and downtime without stimulation so her, so she realizes, oh, I gotta go. So that way, when you take her out, she's going. That's really what you're what you're looking for. Um, that's what I would say. And if that's an issue, you might even tweak her food to where you know you're adding something that maybe makes her go a little sooner. Um, I don't know if her stools are really hard. Do they make doggy laxatives? No, I wouldn't do laxatives. I'm not talking about laxatives. I'm talking about just nutrition. Oh, okay. Just don't. Like no. more, like more fiber, maybe. Do, do not do or more fats, like you know, no. <laughs> but um, like if her stools are really hard, or if you're using something that has uh, like a lot of um, byproduct based or corn based products, things like that, it can uh, make their systems make them hold fish it. Oil. 
make them hold it a lot longer. So you want something to get them moving, you know? Like when, when we used to travel um, for dog shows, mm -hmm. we would specifically transition to a kibble that had um, byproducts, corn, those types of things, because the dogs would hold it for a longer period of time. Huh. Yeah. Wow. So play around with those things and good luck, because that, that is hard. That you is had one question hard. you wanted to go over. I did. I always like to check the live ones. We don't have any more on TikTok. We do. Well, we have a ton of questions, but you said you wanted to go over that one, so we got a ton You're of questions. You're being so ornery. I am not being ornery. Bring up TikTok. No, tick live questions. You know what? I'm going to do Sarah Pratt. Hello, I have a 12 and a half week old puppy. She got shots at 6, 8, and 12 weeks. Can he go on a walk? Okay, first of all, we are not veterinarians. We cannot advise you on what your puppy should do from a, like a vet perspective, uh, from a health perspective, but we can give you our unsolicited opinions <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as tra from a training focus. Uh, you're, uh, me, personally, if I live in a clean area, my puppy is in the yard, in the front yard, you know, on concrete, especially working after one round of booster shots, N not an issue. I'm not going to the park and letting them run around in grass. And like, I don't know what's been there or what coyotes or whatever you have in the area. Don't let them lick any water or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I'm doing that right away. I'll train puppies after two rounds of boosters. We're going to the park. Now I'm, I have our particular park is very clean and it has a huge amount of concrete. So I just stay on the concrete. And then I can just wipe their paws when I get home um, if I felt like they got into anything. That, to me, is more important. The, the small, small risk of getting parvo, um, the, the, the benefit of getting them out and <laughs> preventing behavioral issues is way worth it. The vets have implemented this new system of waiting till 16 weeks old, which is where they get their... Um, yeah, hers is rabies. 12, but 16 is, yeah, rabies. 16 okay. is rabies, so you yeah. probably got your second round of uh, DAPP. So what you're, at, what you're doing now is the reason they do that is because we've had leptospirosis. We had a new like spike of parvo going around the area. And in city, we live a lot closer to each other, so yeah. it's more easily spread. Honestly, truly, when it comes down to it, though, I think that the mental health of a dog can survive the physical health of even the super low chance of them getting parvo because you should be really socializing your dog at 12 weeks old. Mm -hmm. Maybe not nose to nose with another dog, Just but existing you should be training around. and existing around yeah. these other dogs or these other people out in the world to some degree and hopefully in a cleaner environment because that's really important for your puppy's mental growth. If you don't give that to them when they're younger, we see, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a, ra a brash number. I would say we have 40% higher likelihood of reactivity in dogs now yes. and the dogs that I personally train in my own business, including the dogs I train here at Puppy Academy, because the vaccinations are so much later yep. than they were before. Yep. I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm about to get real opinionated. And second. you could and you could take your puppy and go to Lowe's and put like what like put them on the ground mm -hmm. and work them in a corner of Lowe's. Take them to an outdoor mall. Like we have an outdoor like it's California. So I think I said like like 20 times trying to form my, my, my thought. But Do you like it? We live in SoCal. And so there's a lot of outdoor malls that we can go to and work the puppy around so much going on. And then if you have any clean parks, I do think that if you don't live in a clean area, uh, then you should take that into consideration because I have worked on some rescues in some areas like that. And every now and then, you know, Parvo will pop up. But again, just Read that for one. the most part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, real, real quick, real quick. Um, Alia, Alea, beautiful name. How do I stop my two-year-old long-haired dachshund from killing birds in my backyard? Well, <laughs> it's it's over time. The reason we're laughing. This is awful. Dusty killed a bird once. One of my one of my dogs, and and I was I was so sad because uh, we've worked so hard on that, but I wasn't watching him. So he's going to be who he is mm -hmm. when I'm not watching him. Yep. It takes a ton of training, advanced training to control prey drive. That's what, that's what dogs are meant to do, guys. It's so instinctual for a little wiener dog to shoot his head into a hole, grab a badger by the face, kill it, and pull it out. Yep. That's what they were made alive for. So, But, but they were also, but I was going to say, yes, that was a good thing to say first, but they were also made 
to pair with a human mm -hmm. and that human teaches them when it's appropriate to do those things and when it's not. Now, I'm sorry, a two-year-old definitely gets into adult world and our, uh, our advice would be very different and it would take quite a while to go into that. So I'm sorry to, to put off your question, but I just wanna... Uh, we're not gonna put it off. The best advice we could ever give you is to hire a one-on-one -on -one private trainer who maybe even focuses either on obedience to break the habit completely, or maybe you want it to be something you can train on command, of which then you can look into other hunting trainers for that too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you have a couple pathways though. Balance <laughs> trainer if you're looking to get rid of the habit or downsize it tremendously and get more control over it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, and we will see you same time, same place next week.